Maybe you've seen some of the simple arguments for why 0.9 repeating equals 1. One third is certainly 0.3 repeating, and if you multiply both sides by 3, you get what we want. Maybe you've even taken Calc 2 and seen that 0.9 repeating can be represented as a geometric series, a convergent geometric series, and you just use the formula a over 1 minus r to sum the geometric series, and you get 1. But even after numerous proofs like this, you just can't accept that zero out front of the decimal point and think that these numbers are in fact the same. Let's do a formal proof so you have no choice but to accept this result. For now, let's just agree 0.9 repeating is less than or equal to 1. I doubt that you think 0.9 repeating is greater than 1. Let's try to also agree that 0.9 repeating is a real number. Maybe we'll talk about hyperreal numbers a different day. If you can agree 0.9 repeating is a real number, then we're all set. If 0.9 repeating is a real number, then it has to play by the rules of the real number system. And the real numbers are continuous. There are no breaks or gaps in the real number line. A mathematician might call the real numbers dense. That means between any two distinct real numbers, we can find another real number between them. An easy way of doing that is taking the average of the two distinct numbers. So if 0.9 repeating and 1 are two distinct real numbers, they're not equal, well, there has to be some value we can fit between them. Let's just call it x, and now we have this inequality. Let's try to figure out what x should be. To do that, let me introduce a new notation, 0.9 sub n. This represents the sequence of 9s with n9 repeating. Here n can be any natural number. So for example, 0.9 sub 1 would be 0 0.9, 0 0.9 sub 2 would be 0 0.99, 0 0.9 sub 5 would be 0.59s, and so on forever. Since 0.9 repeating has an infinite number of 9s, we can fit this sequence into our inequality. Something to note about 0.9 sub n is that if we add 1 over 10 to the n to it, it equals 1 for all n. For example, let n equal 3. That would be 0.999 plus 1 over 1,000. 1 over 1,000 is 0 0.001, and those sum to 1. So here comes the magic. Let's look at both sides of our inequality. 0.9 sub n less than or equal to x means the same thing as negative 0.9 sub n is greater than or equal to negative x. x less than or equal to 1 means the same thing as 0 is less than or equal to 1 minus x. And from our equation, 1 over 10 to the n equals 1 minus 0.9 sub n. Let's string these three ideas together. 0 is less than or equal to 1 minus x, but minus x is less than or equal to 0.9 sub n. And 1 minus 0.9 sub n equals 1 over 10 to the n. What's the consequence of this? That quantity, 1 minus x, is non-negative. It's greater than or equal to 0 and it's less than 1 over 10 to the n for any natural number n. The larger n we pick, the smaller 1 over 10 to the n becomes. So it won't take you too long to figure out that 1 minus x has to be pretty small. In fact, it has to be 0 if we're being less than 1 over 10 to the n for any n. This is essentially the same thing as the Archimedean property. Well, if 1 minus x has to be 0, that means x has to be 1. What was x in the first place? x was that thing between 0.9 repeating and 1. And if the only number between 0.9 repeating and 1 is 1, it must be that those numbers are not different. They have to be the same number. Hopefully we've ended this debate, but if you want to see my thoughts on a more controversial representation for 1, you can click the video on the screen right here. I'll see you in that one.